To start working on the collection page, let's go ahead and navigate into our store slash collections slash the collection name that you chose it to be. Alternatively, you can also go to your store dashboard, go into product and then collections and then click on the collection and click on view. And it's going to take you to the link that the collection is located at. So in order to get the nice swiping functionality that we have here, and then also for mobile, we're going to use a package and the package is called Swiper. So you can go ahead and Google Swiper.js or just go to swiperjs.com. I'm also going to have the link attached to this lecture, so you can always just click there. But it's a very nice lightweight package that is pretty popular. And again, we're going to use the CDN for this package. So we can just go down to use swiper from CDN. And you'll see at the top here that we have the CSS styles in a package. And then we also have the JavaScript in a package. We will need to install both. And this is because the swiper package also takes care of the animation between the swiping. So for example, like if we go into mobile, we can kind of like drag the images and this is a really nice effect. It doesn't work that well on mobile just because I have to click on dragging it. But if you test it on your actual phone, it works really well. So let's go ahead and copy the CSS first and choose the minified version. It's going to be a little bit smaller and it's going to be quicker for your website to load it. So copy that and let's go back inside our code and let's just close some of these for now and close the header as well and navigate into theme.liquid. Inside of theme.liquid, we can just paste this package at the very top. And let's also grab the minified JS file as well. And we'll just paste that as well. So after we've pasted in the CDN files, we're ready to use it. So let's go inside of our template and we'll choose collection. And this is where the collection page is located. As you can see here, we have a render of the product card and we can just go inside of the product card and we have the each individual card located in here. So what the product card is, it's basically this part where we have the title and we have the image and the price. So here's the title, we have the image, excuse me, the, the price. Then we're checking if it's available. And then we also have the image here. So let's actually remove everything on this page because I want to build it up from the very beginning just so we can understand what's happening. The first thing we'll do is create a div with class name product card. And inside of the product card, we'll want an A tag with a class name of product image wrapper. And inside of the href, we'll include some liquid and we'll say that we want the URL to be the URL of the product. And then using the pipe, we'll say within collection. So what this basically does is it provides the URL for, for the product, but only within the collection. So let me show you how that looks. Right now we're inside of our collection and once we click it, we're taken to the product page. But as we can see here, the collection URL is still left intact. So now if we go back, we go back to the actual collection page. Next, we actually want to put some stuff inside of this a tag because we want to have the image as well. I made a small typo here. We'll create another div with the class name of swiper container. And then we'll add another class name here of swiper container, and then we'll give a dash and then we'll add some liquid logic. So by doing this, we're giving the product here a unique identifier and we'll say product ID. We'll need this for when we're swiping, because if we don't include this, we're going to be basically swiping through all the images at once 
whereas we want to only be swiping through one of the images. So by giving it this unique class name that's unique to each product that we're on, it's going to allow us to identify that particular product. And we can put dashes on the sides here. And what these do in Liquid is they actually remove any blank spaces. So we want the class name to be swiper container and the product ID. Now inside of this div, we'll create another div and we'll give this one a class name of swiper wrapper. Inside of the swiper wrapper, we'll want to for loop over all of the images in the product. And we can do that by including liquid logic and saying for image in product.images. And then we can go to the next line and close this liquid tag. Now inside of this logic, we'll give a div to each of the images. So we'll say div dot swiper slide. And then inside of this actual div, we'll render the image. For the source of the image, we'll also use liquid. And we'll say image.src. And then after the pipe, we'll have image URL. And then here we can just say master. So we're basically requesting the master image here. And we can always change it to a smaller image if the performance isn't what we need. And then for the alt, we can use liquid as well. And we can say image.alt. And this is only if we have alt text for the image. And then we can say escape. And this is basically to escape any HTML that we might have in the alt description. All right, perfect. Let's now close this image tag. And then underneath it, let's include the buttons that we want for the swiping. So we'll say div dot swiper button next. And then we'll press enter. And then inside of here, we can copy this class name. And we'll do the same thing that we did before where we're including a unique identifier for this particular button. And we can say again here, we can say product ID. And then we'll just keep this as an empty div. And we can actually copy that whole line and we'll just change next to previous. And as you can see, I have a double cursor going on here and you can do this on a Mac by selecting any particular word and then hitting command D. I'm not sure what it is on Windows, unfortunately, because I haven't used a Windows computer in years. All right, so that pretty much sums up our images. Now for the product description or for the product title, we are gonna have something else going on. We also want an A tag, but we want an A tag that behaves a little bit differently than what we have here. So let's take a look at what we have. As you can see, we have an image here where when we hover over it, it kind of shows these before and after buttons. And then the product title kind of changes based on our hover. And we have this plus sign here. So let's go ahead and create that. Just after the A tag, we'll create another A tag that will have the same href. So we can just copy that. But we do not need a class name for this one. And inside of here, we can create a new tag with a class name of product card title. And then inside of this div, we'll have an H3. And we're going to include the product title using liquid. So we'll say product the title. And we want it to be uppercase. So we can just do that using liquid as well. We can just say upcase. And then below that, we'll have a P tag with a class name of product card price. 
And then inside of here, we can also include liquid for the product.price. And we can say that this is money and this is gonna give it the money sign or the dollar sign. And then underneath that, we'll have another P tag and this will be the sizes. So we can say product card sizes. And to grab the sizes for the image, what we'll do is we'll include some liquid logic. So we'll say for size option in product dot option by name. And then we'll open this and we'll say size and height instead of here. And then we'll grab the values. And then we can close this for loop by saying and for. And inside of there we'll say size option. And then what we can do is we can include a comma, but not for the last. So basically, as you can see here, we have a comma after each size except for the last one. And we can do that using liquid as well. So we can include more liquid logic and we can say unless for loop dot last. And then we'll just have a comma there. And we'll say and unless. So basically what this does is unless this is the last object in the for loop, put a comma, otherwise don't include the comma. And then underneath this P tag, we can create a new div and this one will be add button. And then we can create a new div and this one will be plus. And we'll just leave it empty and then we'll use CSS to actually insert the plus sign. Okay, perfect. So let's hit save. And then we'll go into our collection page and see what we get. Okay, so it included the master image size, which is pretty big, but I think it'll give us a lot of definition for the images. But now we need to style it and then we also need to include the swiper. So let's include the swiper first and then we'll deal with the actual styling. So for the swiper, we'll go down to the bottom of the page and we'll say script and then we'll declare a new swiper instance and then we'll say that we're looking for the swiper container class so we'll just put swiper container and then we wanted to identify the product by its unique identifier so we'll include the product id here as well and then we'll put a comma and open an object. And this object is where we're gonna place the custom configuration for the swiper. So we'll say slides per view equals one. And you can find all of these on the swiper website. And we'll say centered slides true space between zero and loop true. So these are pretty self-explanatory, but the center slides is we wanted to stop at the center of the image whenever we scroll. The space between is the space between the images when we're scrolling. And the loop is so that the products don't stop. They just kind of loop onto the last one. And then we can also add some breakpoints. So let's put a comma and then we'll say breakpoints. And this will be a new object. And we'll say that Anything after 599, or actually just let's do 600. We'll say allow touch move false. So that basically disables dragging for the desktop. And then we'll say speed zero and navigation will be another object. And then here we'll say next element will be this button. And we can just grab the button from here. And we can just put a period. And then next previous element. 
let's grab this previous element. So small typo here, we actually need to close this at the very bottom, not at the top. All right, and I think we're done with this. So let's save that and make sure we haven't broken anything. And everything seems to be working. And the products are switching, but obviously it's pretty large, so we can't see them. Now let's actually style our collection page. So let's go into our application.scss. And then at the very bottom, and we can say start collection. And then we basically want the whole collection page to be display flex. So what we can do is we can just go inside of our collection here. And inside of the product list, we can say flex. And now inside of the application.css, we can say dot collection list. And we can just say flex wrap. And then we want it to wrap. And then going back into the collection page, we can also add space between class name. And then at the bottom again, we can now start styling the product card. So let's create a new comment. And then for the product card, we'll say width, and then we'll use calculation to say 100% minus 25 pixels and then times two. And then we'll divide that by three. So it will space them very nicely evenly and it will keep it up to date whenever we drag. So let's see how that looks. So there we go. Each card is taking at one third. And then if we make it smaller, it's still keeping it as one third. And then let's add margin bottom, 32 pixels, and height will say 100%. All right, so now we're going to do some CSS magic pretty much because we want the product to stay in its natural height. And as you can see here, the images are really long right now. So instead of giving it a defined height, we're going to use padding to do that. And let me show you how that works. So we'll say product image wrapper and we'll say padding top 120%. And then we'll say display block overflow hidden and position relative and also margin bottom 20 pixels just for the title. So let's hit save and see what we have. So as you can see now, something happened, but it's not the way that we want it to be because the product images are actually below where they're supposed to be. So now we need to go into the swiper container and we'll say overflow hidden position absolute top zero and left zero. And now we can see that the product images are positioned properly, but we still don't see anything. So what we're going to need to do now is position the images properly with height and width. And we can do that by going to swiper slide and we'll give it a display of flex. And then we'll say justify content start align items center position relative and user select none because we don't want people to be able to select the images and then inside of here we reference the actual image and we'll say with 100 percent 
height 100%, outline style none, box shadow none, border color transparent, and object fit cover. And now going back up to the swiper container, let's also add width 100% and height 100%. So after we add that, we go back into the product page and the images are appearing as properly. But it still doesn't work that well. So let's jump into the next lecture where we're going to take care of the buttons and make sure that the swiping is working smoothly.